Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split Say DIY, and where it's festive gourd season, I wanted to do a quick and easy project uh, that kind of tested my Fusion 360 design skills, uh, and that brought us this jack-o'-lantern. Um, basically, I just wanted to design up a jack-o'-lantern to 3D print where you could take off the lid and have some electronics inside. Really simple stuff. Uh, and basically, I just wanted to have some LEDs in the eyes here, and I wanted them to blink ever so nicely with some PWM action. Really simple, yet super effective. This pumpkin was designed fully in Fusion 360 uh, using sketches. I basically drew a oval shape, but like flat on the bottom to kind of get that like pumpkin vibe. Uh, and then I made it so that it was just a single wedge, extruded it, added fillets so that we get the lines here that is so famously pumpkin, um, then revolved it out to get our circular shape. And then this stem was really fun to design. Uh, I'm really into the stem. And then cut the top and shrunk it down um, to 0.99 um, of its size because it deals in, uh, the sizing in Fusion 360 is uh, deals if like one is like the size and then it's decimals after that. And by doing that, I got a really perfect fit, which is, I'm really excited about. And then to get the um, eyes and the mouth, I drew that again with sketches and then did a cut extrude uh, so that you, we get the uh, openness of the uh, the face. Uh, if you want me to go into more detail, like a step-by-step -step design thing on how to do a pumpkin or something similar, let me know and I can do a separate video on it. But after it was all designed up in Fusion 360, I printed it. The pumpkin itself was a long, long print. The walls are actually a little bit thicker than they probably need to, but I kept it like that because it reminded me of what an actual pumpkin would be like. So if you wanted to remix this, and I might also uh, remix it in the future so that it is thinner and more like what you would expect from a 3D print like this, you could definitely do that. It doesn't need to be this thick at all. Uh, the lid uh, did not take as long to 3D print, but still, took a bit, so overall, a long print, but I think worth it in the end because I, this, is, I think, looks like a fairly realistic pumpkin. Uh, and this is the first time I really designed something like this in Fusion 360. Most of the stuff I've designed in Fusion 360 has been um, project enclosures, so more of like your boxy kind of thing, so to kind of step out and do something like this was uh, pretty exciting, and I've wanted to do something like this for a while to try to up my design skills, so pretty happy overall with the design. One thing with the printing process, uh, the supports that I generated in Slicer, uh, it, for some reason they didn't add a support to the middle tooth or this side tooth here, so it basically printed in midair. <laughs> so I actually stuck the little um, nub of plastic that was just kind of falling through the air, luckily I caught it pretty early, um, into some sticky tack that I normally use uh, for my soldering projects to hold things down. Um, and by doing that, it actually saved the print, otherwise I'm pretty sure this thing would have failed, which would have been a bummer, because at that point I'd already been going for like four or five hours just to get to like here. Uh, but you'll notice like we have teeth right now, so what I ended up doing is I went into Fusion 360, um, I measured where the teeth had failed, like the length of tooth that was missing or was all messed up, um, and I did a cut in Fusion 360 on the model to get that length of tooth, export it as an STL, printed it, and then uh, glued it in with some E6000 glue, uh, and I think it looks pretty decent. I basically gave him some capped teeth, uh, but where it is such a long print, I didn't see it as worth printing the whole model again. Uh, so I definitely, if you have like a little piece fail, you can definitely do that. And even if you don't have the original Fusion 360 file, it's not your own model, you can bring it into Mesh Mixer and basically do the same kind of thing. Do a cut and then an export as a new STL, print it, and then glue it onto your model. I had a similar issue with supports for the stem. I basically didn't put enough of them on there, so there was some like junkiness going on underneath, but again, I didn't see it as worth a reprint. And also where it's a stem, I mean, have you seen a pumpkin stem in real life? They aren't perfectly 
geometrical. But that's the 3D printing. Um, let's talk briefly about the guts, the electronics here. Very simple. Uh, we basically have two 10 millimeter LEDs, nice beefy LEDs. Uh, and you can do any color. I chose red because I thought it was a little bit more uh, menacing. Uh, and then it's just uh, soldered up to a Gemma M0 development board from Adafruit. And the reason why I chose the Gemma is it has uh, obviously the LiPo battery plug, so and that's what this is running off of, just a tiny little LiPo battery since it's just two um, LEDs. Uh, and then uh, the Gemma also has an on off switch built onto the board. So that makes it really great for projects like this. Definitely recommend if you only need a couple pins and you need it to be able to turn on and off, look at the Gemma. Uh, and so basically the LEDs are wired up together and then they've got a resistor going to the board. Uh, and then there's one extra piece, a little switch. And if I switch it, the LEDs just stay solidly on and I can switch it back and they'll blink. I wanted to have that option just cause I really, I, it seemed fun. Uh, so that brings us to what's happening in the code. It's coded in circuit Python. And basically we're using um, PWM, pulse width modulation, to get this lovely blinking effect. Now you don't necessarily have to use PWM if, you don't if you're using a board that doesn't have it available, but um, it gives you that nice smooth animation. So basically I have it so that when the switch is in one position, we get this PWM and it's a pretty fast PWM as you can tell. I mean, you can adjust the speed of course. And if you switch it the other way, um, instead of having it just be digitally on, I actually have it so that um, I'm taking like what would be the, the value for PWM to have it stay on. Uh, that's what I'm throwing on there for the LEDs. And by doing that, I'm able to keep everything on the same pin. Otherwise I would have had to do some, some kind of weird stuff to get digital IO working and PWM working at the same time. From what I could tell, maybe you have a better way. But the code, the circuit, the STL files, the whole walkthrough is gonna be available in a project write-up on Hackster.io. I know it's been a while, uh, but I'll, I'll be there and hopefully this is gonna get posted up soon enough so that you can make your own for Halloween, remix it however you want. There's a lot you could do with this LED circuit. You could have it so that you throw in some other sensors. Maybe when it walks by, it starts um, blinking its eyes at you or whatever. There's a lot of things. You could even resize it so that your LEDs, you could use smaller LEDs. Maybe you want to use bigger LEDs. The possibilities are really endless. But that's going to do it for this video. A simple project, uh, but I really enjoyed designing this pumpkin and it also gave me a little bit more courage to maybe branch out a bit in my design. But I didn't do too much like Fusion 360 research necessarily. I just kind of started in with the sketches until it looked the way I, I wanted it to. So if you have a similar experience with Fusion 360 that I do where you've just done kind of similar utilitarian uh, designs, but you want to kind of get a little bit more funky and creative, uh, definitely go for it. Stick with the sketches to get your overall shape and then um, just kind of think through how it would form the shape. Like what, what design tools have you used for your more practical designs? Though then translate to getting your more um, kind of fun, funky design. Like here I knew a fillet would get us the, the lines in the pumpkin and so on and so forth. Uh, but that's gonna do it for this video. If you like to toss me a thumbs up, leave a question or comments down below. I again will have all the links down in the description for the project write-up. Uh, this pumpkin will be on Thingiverse uh, and the write-up will also have the code and the circuit and all the fun stuff. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching and until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY. Ooh.